um, I talked to you last time. Um, I'm in yeah. here in the Sarasota market. So I have like a few questions. So I've been doing sticky notes. I just got done like paying, uh, putting out sticky notes. I put out 35 today and I've been getting a few calls and I put out bandit signs and stuff. But the only thing that I'm coming up with, like people are calling me and like I have this one lady who's um, she had a probate, but um, she was saying that uh, if she doesn't pay off like nine thousand dollars, it was a home equity loan from her mother. And she was saying if she didn't pay off the like the nine thousand dollars by like Thursday, then they would remove her from the estate. And she would like get like they would basically go to the state and she can't sell it anymore. And I was like, I never heard of that in my life. In the I, state of Florida? See, yeah, I'm in the state of Florida. Uh, how was did you look at how the property was titled? It's in her name. The title is like it's in her name, which may, I don't so, I don't get it. The only thing they can do is foreclose. That's it. Yeah. And in so, the state of Florida, it's a long process. So unless they're already in a actual foreclosure case. So a home equity line, they have to foreclose. There's no other way to do it. And I just, there's no other way to do it, period. So I think the problem was that I think I ended up getting outbid by another wholesaler because um, she ended up saying that, oh, it's a guy from Tennessee. And they said that they're going to pay cash for like 420. It was a great comp, um, but she hates the way that they're doing it. Yeah. So she's, but she's looking to move to Ocala and she has a home here in Sarasota. So she was saying, if you can give me a cash offer, I don't want to deal with realtors. So if you give me a cash offer for 400000 the problem is this home is like, there's nothing that's wrong with it. It's so like- is she, a, is she under contract right now with another wholesaler? Yes, she is. Okay, and so, I asked her about it, but I'm sorry, go ahead. Can't, your hands are kind of tied, dude. You, it, once someone's disclosed they're in a legal binding contract, you, you got to be careful. Like, like, Sam, this is a pretty simple one. Yeah, you just- if you're talking to somebody and they have a boyfriend or girlfriend, Stop. Okay. Like, yeah, hey, yeah, course, hey, you yeah. say this. You can say this though. Hey, if anything changes, let me know. Yeah, yeah, but that, like, don't be like, that's you don't all need you your do. boyfriend. Get, get break up with him and go with me. That's first of all, that person would be like, Samuel sounds like a terrible person yeah. to say that. Say, hey, you know what? If something changes. I'm always here. I'm a nice guy. That's it. I'm and, just and, saying. And you're gonna learn from. And the odds are somebody out of state's gonna have a much higher yeah. failure ratio. Oh, yeah. And so you just contact, go, hey, just here's all I ever say to people like that. Hey, just sell your house. And then usually they vent on you. Oh, my God, this guy's got me in a contract. He's threatening me. Lawyers, this is just crazy. All I ask is, well, what's your expiration date? And that's that's all you can focus on because anything else can be used against you. Because if she falls out of contract and you basically influenced it, you can yeah. be accountable for it. And they so will hold you accountable. It's called contract interference. And lawyers are always taken down for it. You do not want to be the guy go, if you go with me, I'll pay you more or I'll do this. You can't. You just got to go, listen, you're dating someone. Let me know if it doesn't yeah. work out and I'll move yeah. on. Don't sound like the guy that says, if you date me instead, I'll treat you way better. Yeah. Like, it just so, sounds And terrible. on the first one, they're saying, it's like you did your job. You put the sticky note, you took the action. It's perfect. And even though if you don't get a deal out of this, you got a lesson. Yeah. You just got to find a way to move a little bit faster. And number two, these are problems you just bring your title company. Go, hey, she said this. Can you look up the title? And they'll tell you right off the bat. No, that's not. Like I did this all day long, thousands and thousands of times. You know why? Because I was so, I spent all my time on motivated tellers and I let people smarter than me figure out the title. I didn't understand that. To this day, when I have a problem, I go, I don't know. Let's just Let's just slap a contract on there. My team will figure it out for you. Yeah. Worst case scenario, you just get out of the contract. And I want you to learn going forward is you don't have to have the exact thing. If she has the intent to sell the house, you have the intent to buy it. Put it on a contract and go, I'm going to get you an answer for that. But I'm confidently can't you in the state of Florida. They can't change the title without foreclosing on the property. It's physically impossible. So I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. So I actually have another question when it comes down to like pricing and stuff like that. I ended up talk. She ended up giving me a price of like four hundred thousand. Do mm -hmm. you still like, for example, like I was talking to this one guy and he was like way over the ARV, but he's like, oh, I'm I'm looking to sell, but he's like way over like in La La Land of the price. Yeah. Do you still even like entertain it? Like, do you still go after it, or do you? Just Here's what I look. I look at I look at the seller and I look at the property. If the property's a piece of crap and it's run down. Either I've seen it or they've told me it's a piece of crap. I chase them down till they sell it. Why? Because you know how many people peacock in this business? You know what I mean by peacocking? No. I'm, I, everything's fine. I'm perfect. There's holes in the roof. There's water pouring <laughs> in. It's a beautiful piece of property. 
Because you know what? If they take it to market, the market's brutal, especially in the state of Florida. They will pick you apart. And a, a realtor can put it under contract by the time they do the inspection. All realtors know this. Talk to a realtor in my state. They'll throw everything under contract and ask for a twenty, thirty thousand dollars discount on the back end. If you don't have a perfect property, so like here's how I deal with it. Or if they say, "Listen, I have to sell the property by this date, or I'm going to be foreclosed on that," then I'll let the reality. You just sometimes the market will do the dirty work for you. Sometimes another wholesaler will do the dirty. I've had wholesalers put a, a property under contract like 150 grand over the ARV. I'm like, "Well, sure." I and here's what I say. I just go like this. Him, I go. You know what? It would be irresponsible for you not to take that deal. Just make sure they have a legitimate deposit and they've shown you a proof, like and make sure they can close the deal. And if they sign it, the odds are it's probably going to fail. And guess who's going to be there to clean it up? And I don't interfere. I just find out, okay, you gave him 30 days. Okay, I'll just check back here. I'll check back here on about day 25, 26. That's it. I don't interfere with people's contract because it's not right. And it makes you liable. Yeah. And it, you can get in trouble doing that. So when they're pie in the sky, if the property is a piece of crap, I always keep them on my radar because have you ever told someone like not quite the truth in low, like if your life's in shambles, but you're going to know everything's perfect. I got plenty of money in the bank account. My girlfriend's good. And in the background, you know, your girlfriend's leaving you and you know, you're about to have an overdraft fee. This is what America does. And yeah. so when, especially when they meet someone like Samuel and they've never talked to you, their first three minutes, everything's perfect in my life. I always look at this. There's a reason you're on this list or there's a reason you called me or there's a reason we're having this conversation and I leave it open. But if the house is perfect, they're perfect and they're seeking a realtor, I just tell them, why don't you just go ahead and list it with a realtor? If there's no motivation, you're literally wasting your time with these people. And that's why I don't want you to waste more wholesalers waste time trying to convert people that are never meant for our business. And so if I have a disgusting house and they want to do it with a realtor, the market will discipline them themselves. I'm not even worried about it, period. I'm really trying to like get my first contract. Like I've only been wholesaling for like 24 days. Yeah. yeah. But like I really am trying to- You were like close. What was the ARV on that probate, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, it was 580. The house next door sold for 699. Uh, they got it under contract for 420. Yeah, hey. it was it was a it was a smoking deal. He, he got I know. So look back through that and just say, listen, I get it. You're new at it. And the thing is, like, guys, understand he took the risk and took the action. I know it's frustrating. You didn't get it. And honestly, I would still follow up. Do the rules I gave you and play by the rules. Don't be a slimy wholesaler because they're the ones who ruined this business. But you're going to get a lesson or a deal, and you might actually get both out of this, Samuel. And I'm just telling you, that's how it works. You just learn. Do you know, guys, know how many deals I screwed up my first year? It was it was terrible. It was really bad because I was so conservative, and I want everything perfect. And I've learned from that. And, I, and the whole point of me is that teach you guys with freewholesaling.com is take the risk, take the initiative. You're going to fail. You just got to. You just got to learn to get back up on your feet and go, now your next one, you kind of know how to deal with it. It's like, hey, let me ask you this, Samuel. You're doing this 24 days. What if a client tells you, hey, listen, I got a probate deal, but my t lawyer told me I can't sell it till the probate's complete. What are you going to say to him? Um, no, the, no, I watched one of you guys' videos about it is um, in Florida, you can sell it. And if you would like to sit down and talk in about it. In the United it. States, you can. It's not just a Florida thing. Okay. You go, do you know there's a way you can sell your property before the probate's complete? Would you like to know how? And I use it as a as a lever to set an appointment with either virtually or physically. I go, well, let me ask you some questions. Now, I'm not going to give it till the very end, like because if you give it away, they're just going to take it and then do it with somebody else. Yeah. So use it as a lever. It's knowledge and action that just sets you apart. If you got bad knowledge, all the action in the world ain't going to make up for it. But I commend you for going out and doing the sticky notes. You know it works. It works. It like so just double down on keep doing what you're doing because you gotta understand a lot of people to get that lead, if they actually got it through a correct source, they pay thousands of dollars just for that lead. I would. So you took the action to do it and just keep learning. I could teach you a million things over freewholesaling.com. Just keep going through it. Yeah. See, I thought, you know how I found out about the probate thing? People, that was the biggest people's objection. I gotta wait till the probate's over. I'm like, and I sat down with a lawyer and a title company. Do we have to wait till it's over? They go, No, nobody will tell you the truth. This is how it really works. I'm like, ah, let's find a way to market it. And that's, so all my hooks in probate is, let me show you how to sell your property before the probate's complete. And everybody wants to do it. Nobody wants to wait because it's their biggest asset within their estate. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Um, and you got it, Samuel. Do you guys also, are you guys pretty big on, um, like, what is your guys, what would you say that the percentage of uh, activity you get from like bandit signs? Pretty, I mean, Sarasota, you got to test it out, dude. It's all testing. It's so all testing, we're not big on you going out and buying 500 or 1,000 signs. They're expensive. That's why, yeah. Yeah. So did you buy the signs? I did like yard signs and like 
wrote on them. We yeah, buy there you go. It it's works. It. Like just test it out though. It might not work. No, you it might. It you you got to test it out. So some of the keys is while you're driving around, you'll consciously start to notice signs. So like you're thinking yeah, about yeah, yeah, signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you look for patterns. And over a 30-day period, if signs are sticking out there and they're constantly putting them out, it means they're working. Mattress signs and dating sites. Those are the ones you try to replicate because they're very good at getting traffic because that's 90% of where their business comes from. Bandit signs. Sweet. All right. Well, I'm going to just keep doing that. Uh, thank okay. you guys so much for the content as well. Okay, man. All right. Good luck, man. Thanks. Oh, awesome. All right. Next so he took the action and he sticks yeah. a sticky note out there and it's like, right. shocker, it works. Oh, oh my God. And the thing is, they're going to hit you with problems, especially yeah. when you're new and you're not going to have any idea how to solve it. That's why we want you to make sure you align yourself with a title company because they're an expert at title and they can give you an instant answer and you can call your seller back and give them the good news. I, I agree. Uh, Jake. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. What's up, man? What's up, Jake? Hey guys, hey, I just started, uh, got in about six weeks ago. Um, so I've been kind of grinding pretty hard, ran into kind of two issues with a probate and foreclosure. Um, the main, the main one I'm looking at, the main issue is, uh, the mother passed away, um, and left the house to, didn't have a will, um, but the house was supposed to fall to the son. Um, but the, the, land that the house is on is owned by the uncle and so the uncle's trying to we're, we're, we're trying to figure out who the house goes to and how to go about getting this thing done the son the son is kind of not available um i think drug related problems and so we're not able to kind of get to him and the house went up for auction but no one wanted to get it in the city so it's still just sitting there um next auction date isn't until next year and so um, uncle wants to try to get the house sold we're just trying to figure out how to what, okay what so let's take. let's unpack this one first what state are you in uh kansas kansas okay um i was born in kansas by the way um so you're trying to figure out the will am i correct like who gets what pretty i think so we're, we're sure we're pretty sure that the House is supposed to go to the sun, uh, yeah. but there is no will. There is no will. So when you say we, are you talking about you and the seller? Uh, yeah, or so, me and me and the um, the landowner, which is the the son's uncle. Yeah. So you've got to understand this part of it. You've done your job. You located somebody that has a uh, distressed type of property. This would qualify for it. You put them under contract if they're the valid person to sign or not. That's not up to you to decide. And then you give it to a title company or an attorney because you don't have control of any of those answers after that. That okay. is, that's all you can do. Like, and I, listen, I want to help people out, but I'm going to tell you <clears throat> when they die without a will in test eight, it's, it's not up to you to make that determination. And honestly, it's not even up to the current family. It's actually up to a judge and how they enter into it. So um, did they actually open up a probate in the state of Kansas? Uh, yeah, the house is supposed to be under probate. I'm not entirely sure if it's still under probate or not. Um, I've been, yeah. it's been hard. But to listen, you, you, hard. you control what you can control, Jake, and let either a title company or attorney tell you what can be done with it. Because if somebody dies without a will and there's no clear chain, it can get really, really complicated quickly. Yeah. Because the question is who can sign for that house? And it might have to wind up going to some sort of public sale. And there's nothing you can do about it. Going to a public sale really has nothing to do with wholesaling unless you have inside information on. Now, here's what you could do. If it was a public sale, do they do uh, the sales online in Kansas? Yeah. So the old days we used to show up. I would go out and find cash buyers. I literally did this. You can't do it anymore. It doesn't work. And find out what they pay for the property. And then I would go to the auction and if he was willing to pay me a hundred for it and I could buy it for like 80 or 85, I would, I would leave a deposit check. I had to leave a thousand dollars at the court. It was non-refundable. And then I would have him fund me the thousand dollars. I'd have him leave a deposit and then I'd go. And then basically you had 48 hours to fund it. And I would tell him, listen, here's okay. the deal. If I do it, it's like you're closing in 24 hours. That's the only other strategy you can do. It's like you did your deal. You found it, but like, I know you want to help them out and solve their problem, but like you can't, it has to go through a court process and they're not going to involve you in it. So okay. don't try to control it because you're not going to get the outcome you want on it. So I should, at least for right now, if I have the only option I have besides the auction thing is, is to pretty much go have them sign a, get the contract signed up, take it to the title company and kind of see where it goes. From Just there. try. That's all you can do. Is yeah. anybody living in the house? Uh, no, we're, we're, we're sure the sun's like squatting in it, but no one's yeah. living in it. Uh, there's, yeah, you're, you're kind of yeah. just, 
follow that route and kind of move on and go find some other motivated tellers. Yeah, there's smoke there, but I don't know if it's going to turn into a fire. Probably sure. not. Okay. Uh, my other question is, uh, so I'm in Wichita, Kansas. It's kind of uh, one of the largest cities in Kansas besides Kansas City. And I think the market might be a little saturated here. Um, I don't have a whole bunch of money to, to put in to do a lot of marketing. So I've been kind of doing it. I don't know if I'm getting to the market with speed like I should. Um, do you guys have any suggestions? Like I've been thinking about going to some smaller towns around the Jake, area. Jake, stop, stop with the excuse, bro. Wichita is not a saturated market. All right. It's, it's it, you're not. fine, man. Wichita is a very good market and it's not saturated by any means, dude. You are creating barriers in your head that Wichita is now a saturated market. I should go to Lawrenceville. There's like four people living there and that's where I want to do. There's, it's saturated for a reason, dude, in your head. It's because there's deals there, dude. That's it. There's a lot of population. A lot of ton, tons of people doing it. So that's, that's why I wasn't sure. I mean, I've been putting Jake, it out as much as I can. Do what they're not willing to do. I can tell you. Yeah, if you're going to co-call high equity list, you're probably going to be saturated and you're probably going to do terrible and it won't do well because there's probably a decent amount of people doing that. But how many people in Wichita, Kansas are reverse drawing for dollars right now? Probably not a lot. Yeah, no, I'm probably one of the only people. So, dude. I'm seeing notes. Yeah. So now we're switching up your mindset. Now you're the only person maybe in Wichita in your own in, in a zip code doing reverse drawing for dollars. Now you now it's not saturated. Now it's now now it's like a good opportunity. Very few people do it. And yeah. there's a reason. It, it, it you're requires doing the probates, work. dude. You you gotta do the yeah. government list, dude. You you know what to do. I think that's a bad barrier you have in your head. And it's on, honestly only you, dude. I could say every market in America is saturated. So dude, I'm in the most saturated, like it's ridiculous here in Florida. But as soon as somebody says it on our team, I'm like, keep going to work or not. Like it's, it just, it's always, it's always been this way. Like I'm here to tell you guys in early 2000 is saturated. Wholesaling is going to be illegal. Everybody tried to talk me out of it. I hear 21 years later. And I'm just telling you the saturation a lot. Cause you just feel like there's a lot of competition. And honestly, it's a message telling you, Hey, listen, do things much more laser focused and do what others aren't willing to do yeah. and carve it and then get some deals on your belt. And then you can make a decision if you want to do some scaling things that would save you some time with money. But I'm all about in the beginning, man, get in there, driving for dollars, government list, reverse driving for dollars, because it still works today. As much as you guys want to use AI and all these softwares, sometimes you just got to go in and do the work and get it done. You have 400,000 plus homes there, people, there's, People, do you think someone's losing their job right now? Do you think somebody's passed away? Do you think someone's being foreclosed on? The more people, the more opportunity. So you have to look at it as like a blessing. You're not competing with realtors. And honestly, most wholesalers don't even know what they're doing. So do the actions that most others won't do and just put your mind and go to work. Because if you constantly compare yourself to the competition and stuff, you'll just psych yourself out. 100%. I get it. I feel you guys. I appreciate it. All right, okay, man. Have a good one. Thank you.